1865, a Civil War physician named Silas Mitchell uh, wrote an article uh, about Civil War soldiers who had, had injuries and then were suffering from a strange syndrome. And he, he wrote in words that we don't use anymore, um, the pain was very various. Um, red hot files rasping the skin. Exposure to the air is avoided with a care which seems almost absurd. And then he goes on to say something that despite my going to good medical school, doing two residencies, never heard anything about that. He said, the pain becomes so severe that it reacts on the entire economy until the entire health is seriously affected. So what he was saying in 1865 is that you can have a pain syndrome that can then react on your whole health system so that everything is affected. And despite you know, very good training, I never heard about it, that pain could be a disease. And in fact, he was writing in 1865 about complex regional pain syndrome that clearly wasn't called that then. At that time, they were calling, a, they called it causalgia or, or different things. And the fascinating thing is that we know now with the science that we have that we can demonstrate that this isn't just something that these patients are crazy or that the pain makes them crazy, but this is something where their patient's whole health becomes involved as a part of this pain syndrome. And work that's been done over the last decade or two decades now can verify a lot of what Silas Weir Mitchell was talking about in 1865, 150 years ago. I mean, basically, if we do a functional MRI of the brain, and what a functional MRI is, is an MRI that not only looks at the structure, but also looks at what's going on in the area, and when there's changes in activity, we can either see it getting darker or lighting up. We see in complex regional pain syndrome, for instance, five areas that light up in an unusual fashion that you wouldn't see in a regular person. Now there are two sensory areas that you would expect in a, a pain syndrome, but then you see the anterior cingulate cortex, which is part of the limbic system that's responsible for, for anxiety, for depression, for even to extent motivation, um, appetite, sleep, libido. So if somebody stops being motivated, stops walking around, is depressed, doesn't eat as well, then you start seeing changes that are coming from the brain that then react on the entire health. And, and this is what we see that before we had functional MRI, we were knowing that a lot of these things were occurring, but we had nothing to verify it. Now, if you start looking at some of the things in the immune system and you look at tumor necrosis factors and all kinds of cytokines, um, which are chemicals in the blood, demonstrating inflammatory processes, in other words, inflammation, we see that you can get neuroinflammation as a consequence of this when everything starts going awry. So you have a whole soup, if you will, of a constellation of different things going on in the area. Now, you take work that Anne Louise Oaklander did at, at well, I don't know if she did when she was at Harvard or, or at Johns Hopkins, but um, she, she did work where she was biopsying the skin of patients that have these pain syndromes, noticing that there are significant changes in the small axons in the skin where the pain is, but more profoundly important is that if you look on the exact opposite side, even when the patient isn't yet experiencing pain, they can have similar kinds of changes absent the pain. So what we understand now is that complex regional pain syndrome is one manifestation of how pain really is a disease.